Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Don't have regrets in life. Um, this is a very important thing that people need to think about. You can't change most of the things that you may be regretting. Um, it doesn't matter how trivial or how complex or difficult it is for you. The reality is you can't change them. Um, this is why like if somebody's got an alcohol problem and part of the alcohol, alcohol anonymous uh, training, etc. Or development, I'm not sure what they would actually call it. Um, going over people um, to apologize for the things they've done previously is part of closure. Now, people misunderstand this, I think. It is, the reason they need closure is because they can't close that door. They need to apologize, they need to say, I did this wrong or whatever. That is because they still feel the regret. Um, for some people, apologizing may be something they need to do to close the door, like where people have a, a drinking issue. Um, but personally, I take most things on the chin. Um, I'm not perfect, it may surprise you. Um, I do rub some people up the wrong way on a regular basis. But does it define me as a bad person or a good person? Actually, it defines me as a character. Um, it makes me who I am. It's why people employ me, for example, because I'm not a walkover. I will fight my corner or fight other people's corners. Um, would I apologize for doing things the way I do them? The answer is no. It's not because um, I have a, uh, what do you call it? It's, it's not that I regret anything. I don't regret how aggressively I go after things um, because some situations warrant that. I don't have a situation where I'd actually say I went too far on that, but that that comes from uh, fine tuning everything else to realize that, okay, um, even, even if I stepped over the mark, um, I probably wouldn't apologize. It's not a case I couldn't apologize. It's, it's more a case I would correct it. Um, but I can't, I can't really think of situations where I'd actually do it. Um, I know some people have, uh, you know, like yelling at a policeman, for example. I don't yell at police. I don't, like I said in my last video, I don't value them. So they're insignificant. So if somebody's insignificant, how can I get annoyed at somebody? But I know other people may yell at them, but at the same time, the only regret I would have in that situation is I wasn't smart enough to actually do something that would be more um, constructive. Um, all right, I'll, I'll give you a little example. I was working in Suffolk and Norfolk and my vehicle was stopped for no reason other than the police decided to do this random check for no apparent reason. Um, but bear in mind, Eastern Europeans are bringing wagons over, uh, well, from all over Europe that are just walking away, don't pay fines, don't get any hassles whatsoever. And these things get in the media. So what they do is like, we're going to do something to show that we're doing something. So what they do is they target British motorists because um, obviously you, they can find us, they can hassle us because uh, there's no point doing the other people because they just laugh at them and drive off. So I got this guy, this motorcyclist uh, police person, um, basically stopped me from doing what I had to do. Wasn't breaking the law, wasn't doing anything wrong. Um, he took me off to this depot and I just basically told him, says, why are you wasting my time? I says, you may have time to do this, but as a taxpayer, I think it's wrong. And he was like, went off on one for five minutes. 
Um, they even dip tested my fuel to check I had any red diesel in my tank. They were, it was just a complete farce. Um, I remember taking the key out of the vehicle, stepping out the vehicle, etc., and using my mobile phone. Now, see, this is me. I don't trust police. I dislike them. Um, so, if you have your key in your ignition and, and uh, they decide that, oh, you're in charge of a vehicle, we'll prosecute you because um, you use the mobile phone. That's the sort of stupidity the police are in the UK. I know somebody that was um, taken to court for having his car keys in his pocket. He was drunk at the time, but where was he? He was in the city centre and he was walking home he, but because his house keys are on the same key ring. But because he was in charge of a vehicle, they decided to do him for being in charge of a vehicle. Um, these are the sort of reasons I dislike the police. Um, but anyway, so I've got a mobile phone and he's, this guy's like, oh, are you struggling? Yes, it says, no, I'm just taking a picture of yourself and all these people. It says there's six police motorbikes, two police cars, and at least 20 people from the vehicle authorities, the DVLA, uh, not the, that's the licensing authority, the uh, MOT testing ones, I can't remember what they're called, and the police. I said, how much is that costing the taxpayers? And this guy threatened to arrest me. And I was like, what are you talking about? So you're threatening me now. And, and instantly he's got to retract. Um, because obviously I'm still recording on my phone anyway. But the, the point being is I wasn't the one riled up. He was getting wound up and wishing he'd never stop me. And he wouldn't stop me ever again because he knew I'm a pain in the backside. Um, Where's my regret? Do I regret what I do? That's no. Will he be regretting it? Probably later, you'll be sitting in the pub whining about this twat that he stopped that made his life a nightmare for the day. But for me, that's what I set out to do anyway. Um, I wasn't doing anything wrong. He was. He was bothering me because the whole political system is a complete farce in the UK with, relating to vehicles uh, where people actually want to stem the the number of foreign vehicles causing incidents in the UK. So they make a, a um, farcical uh, example of stopping UK citizens to say, look what we did, can we have a little gold star? Um, so I got no regrets. And the fact is I didn't get wound up. I don't get annoyed, like I says, it's all about how you deal with situations. And if you program yourself to have no regrets, you'll find that everything's an experience. If something goes wrong, it goes wrong. Um, I put diesel in my petrol car the other, uh, other month. Did I regret it? That was a regret I did. <laughs> but did I whine about it? The answer is no, I was just like, Okay, I wasted 10 quid worth of fuel because I'm going to have to put that, um, I'm going to have to pay for that um, and just fill the rest of the tank up with diesel. Don't do any damage to the engine anyway. But the fact was, if it was diesel, it would have been an expense I could have recovered. Um, but because it was petrol, I just had to pay for it because it shouldn't have been in the car in the first place. That's a regret. That's about as serious my regrets get. Um, because the reason being is I've had situations where um, things could have gone a better way, but at the same time, that's life. It's experience. Experience is a different thing, you see. If you write things off as experience, you don't regret it. You're just like, mm. a friend of mine had the same with the garden center. He had the opportunity to invest 100,000 uh, pounds into a garden centre that's now worth probably six million pounds a year. He regrets it. I don't, and I wouldn't for him because he had other stuff going on. If he if he had a hundred thousand pounds spare, he would have invested in it. But the reality is he didn't have a hundred thousand pounds spare in the first place. He would have had to take it on a a risk that he couldn't afford if it did go wrong. If he took the risk. That would have been um, something I would have regretted. If I had gambled everything that myself and my family owned on an idea, 
and it failed, um, I regret it. If it um, worked, I would still question it because I took things too far. I took too, but too much of a bigger risk that has a detrimental effect on my entire life and my family's life. That would have been something I would regret. And that's why I generally don't have these. And this is why I'm saying review what you're doing in your life. Don't get hung up on things. Just review it. What's bothering you? What's, what has got under your skin um, that you still think about? And try and find the positive aspects of it. What did you learn from it? What was the uh, outcome? Um, could it have been worse? Did it have a positive thing that actually changed and made your life better? Did it make you a better person? Because the fact is, not there shouldn't be any regrets in your life. Regrets hang on to you and fester. They make things bad for you. They become a curse. They make people negative. They make people um, have doubts on their themselves. So I, I say no regrets. Learn to find where the positives are. Because moving to a city, for example, might be a regret. You wish you had never moved there. But the reality is, what have you forgotten when you thought about that? Where were the positive bits of being there? What did you enjoy? Because the fact is, you may have not found work, but you might have found the woman you love. You may have not um, enjoyed the weather, but you managed to get enough money to pay for something, uh, a new car, house, or moving back home. It's all experience. There's a difference between regrets and experience. Experience is life. Regrets are something you just hold on to, which you should actually just ditch. They're not gonna help you. You can't move forward with regrets because they sit in the back of your mind. So ditch them. Thanks for watching.